I think that you said the question, can cities change the world? But practically, I'm, I'm going to say it, it, they do change the world. They already change the world. Um, so if you think there's 4 billion people that live in cities, uh, and by the end of this year, there's going to be another 70 million. Uh, cities are the major producers of, of, of carbon emissions. Uh, city, there's 200 city networks globally. Uh, that do all sorts of things from collaborations on health and climate and security and gender. So I think that the question isn't can they change the world, the question is how do they change the world. They are an enormous presence in the world. Um, so if you think the world produces uh, 1.3 billion tons of waste, so they are their material presence on the world. But they're also politically connecting uh, and doing all sorts of things. So the, um, for instance the Climate Leadership Group, which is the 86 largest cities in the world, uh, in the last 10 years has contributed 8,000 actions to, to attack and confront climate change, um, whilst it took about 10 years to get a new post-Kyoto Treaty between states. Are cities the new global leaders? And it isn't easy to answer the question. It isn't, there's a lot of talk of mayors ruling the world, but then practically cities are not just mayors. Mayors are critical because they represent urban citizens and there's more and more of those ones. But it's important to think of city leaders as also business leaders, uh, NGOs and community leaders. So are cities the new global leaders? Yes, if we don't limit this to simply thinking about mayors, but thinking people that represent urban dwellers and urban citizens. So what, what can they do for peace? They, they are already doing a lot for peace by collaborating with each other. So over 200 city networks, they're collaborating on all sorts of things, including peace, inequality, gender, and, and peace building. So for instance, there are municipalities in Palestine and Israel collaborating with each other. Uh, but they can also do better to serve their citizens. So there's a, uh, about 100 million um, homeless people in the world, and collaborations and city diplomacy can do better for those people that are in less fortunate economic conditions. I think it would be wrong to say that Reykjavik is a, sm a small country and far away. Um, when you talk about cities, you talk about very networked entities. So Reykjavik had, if I'm not wrong, a um, city of literature from UNESCO. And initiatives like that allows you to connect with other cities, even if it's on literature. That can do a lot for peace and, and reconciliation and city-to-city -city relations. And that does a lot about stability globally. Um, so it doesn't matter, the size of the city almost never matters, it's what it does with its connections that matters.